What's going on YouTube, it's your boy George. We're getting ready to build us a little six on six saddle branch. Right here we're just marking it guys and I got a little layout from an online source. I just kind of Googled it and printed out one of the sheets and went ahead and cut it for you guys. Hopefully you guys find this video useful. Um, It'd be pretty much the same thing as welding a 12 inch. It's just on a smaller scale. Nevertheless, it's a lot of work guys. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and find everything useful in here, all right? See you guys around. This is what we're working with. Right after some uh, some cleaning up, not beveled yet guys, just wanted to get everything straight and, and, and cleaned up. Cause I still gotta get a straight cut on here so I can mount it on top of this pipe. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Oh, and this, this is where I, I kind of dented into the pipe while cutting. You can see that right there. We're gonna have to come back and touch up on that and clean it up because you don't want dark, stop, uh, dark spots in your weld. It's corrosion. Get rid of all those dark spots. You want it clean in there, guys. Show you here in a second. So after the grinding and whatnot, this is what we got going on. Please excuse the deceased ass pipe, guys. That's all I have. It's pretty much trash. That's what we're doing this uh, 16 saddle on this Schedule 80 pipe. Not my favorite to do. I'd rather do it on 12 inch 250 wall, but y'all see that big old gap in there? That means we gotta work with our ears so this I can sit up. We're gonna have to mess with it and get a good fit in there, guys. Quick tip for everybody that's out there that's never worked in, out in pipeliners or any fabrication uh, station job. You don't wanna grind or arc off anywhere outside the bevels. You grind in the pipe, that's automatic bust. They'll look you out and you won't get to finish your test, no matter how slick you are. Don't grind on the pipe. That's a green, green mistake right there. This side here is fairly weldable. But the other side. It's not sitting right. So we're gonna have to mess with it guys. Now that you got have uh, you have a pretty close fit, what you want to do, you want to get your soap foam, mark the inside of the pipe, mark the outside. If you don't want to cut more than you should on your fit. If you do, you're probably screwed up, you're gonna get left out. Alright guys, we can go ahead and set the pipe up top again. That way we know how much we missed. Remark it and go ahead and start grinding on it again. Alright guys, so we got a little bit of grinding to do there. Where you see the soapstone chalk around that area. 
shop around that area. There's some right there in that ear. I know you can see it down there. And you gotta make sure this pipe is flush with that pipe up there. I've never actually met anybody that said, oh, hell yeah, I love taking a, a branch test. I didn't want to bore you guys with all the grinding, so I opt out of recording the inside grinding action shots. Um, but yeah, guys, that's fairly close to where we need it to be. Pretty flush, pretty flush in there. I think we can go ahead and start welding on it. Uh, another quick tip, guys. I always mark, give myself a mark on this side and on this side of the pipe. That way I know which side the saddle goes. Because remember, it's not symmetrical. You gotta figure, you're grinding for this side right now. If you were to flip it over, it would not match. I mean, I'm not perfect. It's not perfectly symmetrical. So this is where it sits and this is where it goes. So we're pretty much ready for the tax, guys. This is my spacers. 332nd, 70S6, filler wire. Just taped up up top. That's gonna be my spacer. Uh, if you have an experienced helper, once you get the saddle set on top, you could actually get your helper to look through the gap and pick it up in one of the corners and you get attacked like that, you know, and you, you work your fit. But uh, since I'm working by myself, I'm gonna set myself with these little two spacers here. Let's get it. And for your tax guys, remember, you don't wanna tack anywhere here or your throats. Because that's where you're gonna cut the straps. You don't want to have any starts and stops on there. Uh, I tried it one time for a test that I didn't care for. I was like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a tack here, a tack, you know, vice versa. And it actually passed, you know, but it didn't bust. So it's kind of one of those things where it's luck. You really don't want to have too many starts and stops in this area because that creates problems for you. It could, uh, you never know, you could catch some slag in there or whatever. So if you could actually run a, cons a consistent beat all the way around, where you're gonna cut your straps is a lot better. And you know, you wanna get paid, so why take the risk? Now for the tax guys, I'm gonna give myself a tack here, a tack completely opposite from there, on this side, and then I'm gonna work my fit from there. Probably another tack here and another tack over there. We're gonna four tack it. And I'll show you guys in a second how it's gonna look. Now we're doing 330 seconds, 60 tens, cause again, guys, I don't really work with a lot of carbon steel. As you can already tell everything corrodes out here. So I got some 330 second rods. Hopefully I have the right amperage. Let's get it. About an inch tack, guys. Once you get one tack in there, you can go ahead and put the spaces out. You don't want to leave them in there because they will get stuck. All right. We open it up a little bit. You got to bring it down some. All right. So we got one tack, we got two tacks. Now we can either put a third and a fourth, or we could just put a third. We gotta figure out where it's tighter. So this side is tighter. We probably gotta bring it down this way, wedge this side over to bring this side down, cause it's a little bit, it's got a little bit bigger of a gap. Right, guys because this is schedule 80 pipe so you could take some heat you could actually step it in there and be all right well that's that 
back, guys, after a good little cleanup. It's actually ready to put a beat in there. It's not the perfect, most perfect fit, but I find that if you, find, if you try to get the most perfect thing out there, it's going to take you all day, and you really don't want to be stuck in a well lab or at a site all day. If you could go ahead and step it in there, shit, why not? You know, slip one out. Remember, all you got to do is burn the walls. No blow throughs, no heavy beads, no poop in there. Just, just a little clean bead in there, guys. I mean, it's a saddle, for God's sakes. That's enough for today, though. I got to go get the right rods and we'll make a different video on the welding, guys. Peace. It's three o'clock, guys. I started this joint around one o'clock when I came back from lunch. And that just shows you how time consuming these things can be. It's idiotic in my opinion, but uh, it's one of those things you gotta do for the pipeline. We'll get the right rods, like I said, guys. Uh, we get everything ready and set to go for the next video. That way I can get some cool art shots for you guys. And I appreciate you guys rocking with me. If you find this useful, Please guys, like it, share it, and subscribe it. And if you don't like it, please let me know what I could do better for uh, you know for my channel. I take criticism all the time, so don't feel bad if you gotta tell me something. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to uh, hit the notification button, and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Right? Going home. Peace.